Hello, I'm Daisy, I work at Exploding Kittens, and I'm going to teach you how to play without fail in just a few minutes. The goal of the game is simple. Just be the first player to get five or more points. The way you get points is by attempting challenges that start out really easy. But this is not like any other game you've played before. In Without Fail, there are two important roles, the challenger and the teammate. The challenger is the person who will attempt the challenge. The teammate is the player willing to risk the most by believing that the challenger will succeed. If the challenger succeeds, both the challenger and the teammate earn points. That's why you want to be the teammate. You can earn points even if it's not your turn to try a challenge. Everyone competes to be the challenger's teammate by making the challenge harder and harder. The person who makes the challenge the hardest gets to be the teammate. Okay, the easiest way to learn the game is through an example, so let's jump right in. To set up the game, sit around the table and give one point token to each player. Put the rest back of the box. Then grab a deck of cards, shuffle them up and put them on the table so that the setup side of the cards, the lighter side, is face up. Keep all the other components in the box for now. Now we'll pick a player to go first. Let's say you. Take the top card from the draw pile and look at the setup side. Do not turn the card over. You're only allowed to look at the setup side. Let's say this was your card. The picture shows you how to set up your challenge. It shows here that it's set up on the floor, and so you'll put two cups right next to each other with a sand timer next to the cups. That's it. Your job is over for now, and the focus moves to the other players. They are gonna try to earn the right to be your teammate. No one knows what the challenge is yet, but the line here says, move the cups farther apart to make this challenge harder. Each player can do one of two things. They can either move one of the cups farther from the other to make the challenge harder, or they can drop out because they think the challenge is too hard and you're likely to fail. I know it's weird to say the challenge looks too hard when you have no idea what the challenge is, but there's some helpful clues on the card that we'll talk about in a moment. Player one starts and says, sure, I'll move one of the cups a few feet away from the other side, and then physically moves the cup. This is important. Don't just shout out distances. Instead, physically move the cups on the floor. Player two is next and says, I think they can be a bit farther apart than that, and moves one of the cups again. Player three looks at the difficulty scale at the bottom of the card and sees that this challenge will be easy if the cups are five-ish feet apart. Medium at 10-ish feet and hard at 15-ish feet. They decide to move the cups about 15 feet from each other. One quick note, you will never need a tape measure. 15-ish feet means just that, 15-ish. A little more, a little less, it doesn't really matter. Your best guess is fine. Okay, now we're back to player one, and they think that player three moved the cups too far apart, and that you'll probably fail the challenge when you try it. Instead of moving the cups any farther, they say, I drop out. On player two's turn, they nudge one of the cups the tiniest amount farther. Player three looks at that and says, I drop out, because they also think you're going to fail. Player two is the only player left because they made the challenge the hardest. So they officially become your teammate and the difficulty level they set for the challenge is final. Now you can turn over the card and read the challenge out loud to all the players. I must run back and forth between the two cups five times. I have 30 seconds. Start the timer now. Uh-oh, that would have been easy when the cups were right next to each other, but the other players believed in you so much that the cups are now on the opposite sides of the room and the timer has already started. After the challenge, if you were successful, both you and your teammate get one point. If you failed, everyone else, meaning all the players that dropped out, get one point. But also, you and your teammate lose one point token each. Notice that the penalty for failing is greater than the reward for success. That means you have to be careful when you make the challenge harder. Believing in your friends is great, but too much faith and you'll make the challenge impossible. That is the fastest way to lose the game. Okay, that's everything you need to know, so let's quickly recap. One, pick a player to go first. That player will draw the top card and without looking at the other side, set up the challenge. Two, go through the process of getting a teammate where the other players compete to make the challenge harder. The player who makes the challenge the hardest becomes the teammate. Three, read and attempt the challenge. And of course, unless stated otherwise on the card, no one can interfere. Four, hand out points. Five, discard the card, proceed clockwise to the next player as the challenger. Six, then draw the next card and repeat the process. The first player to get five or more points wins. One last thing before we go. Some challenges ask you to make the challenge harder by momentarily tilting the sand timer. 
Here's what that means. The timer has 30 seconds of sand in it. You'll start with all the sand on one side and the timer laying horizontally. To make the challenge harder, you'll need to give the challenger less than 30 seconds. How much less is up to you, but you'll do this by tilting the timer upright so that sand falls from the full side to the empty side. When you think enough sand has fallen, lay the timer back down in its side to stop the flow of sand. Players can continue making the challenge harder by repeating this process so that there is less and less sand left in the timer. Also, the sand timer has a different color on each end, so keep track of which side started out full. There's a bunch of other stuff in the instructions if you need it, about things like what to do if you tie, how to play with two players, and even a more intense version of the game called Hero Mode that you should absolutely try after you've played a few times and are ready to ratchet up the intensity. Okay, that's it. Have fun.